welcome to another episode of Don't Call It Small. I'm your host, Natasha Foreman. If you don't know me and you have no clue what this podcast is all about, let me share a bit. I'm a lead management consultant at Foreman and Associates LLC, where we provide consulting and professional development services. And Don't Call It Small is where we talk all things business, share tips and news that you can use, and highlight the people and ideas behind the products and services that we buy. To learn more about our team, please visit foremanllc.com. That's F-O-R-E-M-A-N-L-L-C.com. And oh my goodness! Whoop, whoop. How are you doing? I'm so excited to be here with all of you. Another day, another blessing. I hope that you're doing great and you're feeling great today. I'm excited about today's episode. Today we're going to explore time management and how we can work smarter. Oh yeah. Yes. Um, If you're here with me because you struggle with it, (laughs) then I'm I'm glad to have you with me. Um, Oops. I'm up here clicking on stuff I'm not supposed to be clicking on. (laughs) There we go. See? What's going wrong? I might want to start off today uh, with a quote from Tony Morgan that says, you get to decide where your time goes. You can either spend it moving forward or you can spend it putting out fires. You decide. And if you don't decide, others will decide for you. This topic and even this quote is a great tie into tomorrow's um, post that you can find on the Foreman Associates blog. It's examining how to effectively delegate. Be sure to check it out. Um, Time management. Oh, my gosh. um, (laughs) Has been a grappling topic since I think we, you know, we made that period between sunrise and sunset a pressing priority. And I was thinking about something earlier today while I was in the shower. I get I I get some great ideas in the bathroom and don't act like it's just me. When you're disconnected from phone calls and emails and alerts and notifications and and family and friends and you just have this moment, it's like a clarity. It's just this oh and there's either these little nuggets or an avalanche of information that just comes rushing in. Yeah. I mean I really wish I had some type of waterproof notepad that I could write my ideas and thoughts down while I'm in the bathroom. Like, you know, if I'm in the shower or in the bathtub or there's just times I just walk in there and I just close the door and I'm just like, ah, I just disconnect from the world. Um, But anyway, let me refocus as I I don't want to lose precious time. So back to what I was saying. While in the shower, a thought came to me. There are numerous studies and interviews that indicate that the most successful people rarely procrastinate. They're pretty good at making decisions quickly and running straight to the task rather than putting it off. What they can't get to or know that they risk overlooking, they delegate to someone else. I can be easily distracted. Just in um, prepping for today's show, I got distracted several times by notifications on my Ancestry.com app. And then when I went online to check a source for something, I got distracted by this interesting article about this indigenous female model who's on a mission to bring positive change for her people and this land that her ancestors have been stewarding for thousands of years. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. Then when I logged into the CMS for my podcast, I got distracted by a notification that we have had 1,000 downloads, whoop, 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 yes. And it gave me the option to share it on social media. So what did I do? Yep, yep, yep. I fiddle-faddled around with that for several minutes. Then when I was done with that, I had to remind myself what the heck I was initially doing on my CMS. Oh, that's right. I was looking to see if I already had recorded an episode dealing with delegating and procrastination because I couldn't find my other... Um, notebooks from the past two years. So (laughs) look at how much time was wasted with the distractions. When you're charged with completing a task, it's vital to reduce or eliminate the distractions that will derail your plan. Something else that I have to address, I'm going to address this now, is that I have a tendency to procrastinate. And I I won't lie, I I think I've shared this fact before more than once on this podcast. And I found this quote from Wayne Dyer that says, procrastination is the art of keeping up with yesterday and avoiding today. And I just had to laugh because it's so true. I could have a to-do list 
and or just one singular to do and it gets pushed over to the next day and the next and the next and when I finally jump on it I get it done and I feel so accomplished I'm patting myself on the back but I also have to say to myself dang I could have completed that a long time ago and the reason for this is I have a habit of putting too many tasks on my to-do list for the day. Sometimes my to-do list looks like something you would expect someone to accomplish between the hours of 5 a.m. and 11 p.m. And my ignorant butt may not get started until 11 a.m. And that's six hours of time I can't squeeze in to do those other tasks. So then I'm reprioritizing and at the end of the day, I'm forced to shift them over to another day. That just didn't make any sense. Uh, I also know that I usually put off the tasks that I'm dreading the most. Like you guys know that I am a blogger and I am an author now and I love to write, but I won't lie. I have stopped and started writing books plenty of times. I've done the same thing with some of my blog posts. I've done the same thing when I'm having to prepare for this podcast. <laughs> and it is simply because that mountain just seemed too big to even consider making those teeny tiny steps. So instead, I pursue something else that I deem more enjoyable, that I could get the instant gratification of saying I got it done, and all because it would take less time to complete it. But the mountain isn't going anywhere, and I won't get to the top of that bad boy if I keep hanging out at the bottom. Like, it's just not going to happen. And so there are numerous reasons we procrastinate, but let me stay aligned with my shower thought for a moment. Cause see, you see how I'm now diverging. I'm now going on a tangent somewhere else. So back to my moment in the shower, I'm lathering up and I'm in the shower and I'm taking in all this steam and letting my curls just marinate in the steam. Um, and I'm in the shower and I'm thinking like, if we're procrastinating, putting off doing something for whatever reason, and if we're not properly managing our time, but also choosing to not delegate tasks to make the best use of our time, then what are we accomplishing? They say that goals are dreams with deadlines attached to them. But if we aren't doing anything because we're procrastinating um, or we're mismanaging our time, then what are we actually doing? Are we just wasting time cranking out goal posters and vision boards, curating Pinterest boards, sharing hashtag goals um, <laughs> on social media with images of dream homes, vacations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Are we just sitting back dreaming all that gum day? Like, what are we doing? I mean, we could be a dreamer, but heck, we need to have some hiking boots, a shovel, pick something. We need to be doing and not just thinking. We can stare at the mountain all day. I mentioned that earlier, right? All week, we just stare at that mountain. But unless we start climbing, we won't go anywhere. It's like when someone asks you, so what is your focus this year? And you say, I plan on pursuing my degree in blah, 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 X, Y, Z. And they say, great, what steps have you started to get this ball rolling? And then you just look at them with this dumb look on your face. And then you say, um, yeah, well, I haven't actually started the process. It's just something I've been thinking about. Oh, okay. We haven't prioritized that dream to make it a goal and then prioritize that goal with our other goals. Great time managers are on time. The majority of the time, I, I know this for a fact. I know great time managers. They are the ones who arrive 20, 20 to 30 minutes before the scheduled time. They usually complete their work with spare time left after to reflect, review, you know, work on something else, possibly bust out with a TikTok video. I don't know. They aren't procrastinating for the most part. Um, and they are intentional and they run headfirst towards whatever they're pursuing. This is something that we just kind of see. It's a common theme. My family, I'm just going to, you know, just be a little transparent, a little humor. My family has a tendency of arriving places late. I tell people to lie and just say that we have to be somewhere an hour or two before the actual scheduled time. And then at that point, my family will arrive on time. So if you say be there at 6 p.m., they will stroll in or run in like it's a race. Um, but it's usually probably around 7 p.m., 7.30 or later. And there's always an excuse for the tardiness, right? It's, it's never really our fault. <laughs> And the truth is, the arrival time simply wasn't a priority or not a higher priority than something else. And I've been working diligently on arriving places on time. What I find interesting is that when it's something work-related, I'm early and I'm ready to roll. When it's something personal in nature, I'm more relaxed. But what am I saying to the person or persons who are waiting for my arrival? I'm telling them that they aren't important enough, valuable enough to meet them at the agreed upon time. And I know I talked about this in another podcast. It just, it's just like resonating with me. I know I did. So, I mean, I'm going to ask you, like, how many of you find yourself running around and you're feeling overwhelmed because you have too many things on your plate? You overcommitted yourself. You quite possibly make it a habit of overcommitting yourself. And you have to really ask yourself, like, why do you keep saying yes to things when you already know that you have more than enough to do? Are you being a people pleaser? 
Are you trying to prove that you could be Superman, Superwoman, Wonder Woman, whatever? Are you trying to live up to other people's perception of you being the go-to get her done person? Are you trying to live up to like their expectations? Like what's going on? Um, you have to really dig into why you're putting more on your plate than you can handle. And so then you have to then say, you know, why don't you then delegate some of the things that are on your to-do list so that you can focus on the items um, that need your most attention? I can already hear some of your excuses rolling my way now because I've had some of these excuses. So I can hear some of you saying, oh no, Natasha, I, I just prefer to do things myself because I can guarantee it'll be done the way I like and I don't have to waste time trying to explain it to someone else. Or you could say, I just get it done faster if I do it myself. Or you're like, oh, no way. I can't trust my work to others. This is my baby. This is my project. This is my everything. This is my business. Oh, no, no, no. Um, or something else I've heard and I know I'm going to hear is I'm not a good delegator. I don't know how to separate my list and decide what to ask someone else to do for me versus what I definitely need to do myself. And I get that. I struggle with that myself. Like, how do I determine what to delegate? So rather than spending too much time speaking about delegating, let me say this. Check out the Foreman Associates blog post tomorrow. Um, it'll be live tomorrow. It's dedicated to delegation and I'm sure it can help you get started on a healthy delegation journey. So back to this whole working smarter and time management. How can we work smarter and grow into better time managers? I have these list of things and, and I hope you're taking notes. Okay, get your, pa your paper or pencil ready. So number the first thing that really comes to mind is that, um, um, and the number one thing that we're seeing as a glaring red flag is the practice of multitasking. Um, they've already shown and proven that multitasking is a myth and is a mental health demon. It's literally just like sucking the life out of us. It's recommended that you focus on one task through completion and then begin the next one. Stop trying to octopus your way through the day. Trust me, I used to call myself the queen of multitasking, but then I was also the queen of burnout. Like, come on, sis, stop it. Number two, this leads to another major point folk that you have to focus on is take more breaks throughout your day. You don't have to drill down on one task nonstop for eight hours straight so that you can brag about it on your favorite social media site. You know, break up your task. I am learning. I'm loving this practice. Break up your task with scheduled breaks, even if that means programming your phone to set off an alarm every two to three hours. Um, when the break time arrives, stop what you're doing. Get your butt up away from the task. Go relax your mind. If your break is for 15 minutes or 30 minutes, you can go and grab a healthy snack. You could take a brisk walk to get some fresh air. Grab one of your favorite puzzles. Play around with the puzzle. You can dance, whatever. You could just have some time to meditate. Do a little yoga pose or something. Or just close your eyes and get a power nap to recharge. But force yourself to take those breaks. Now, if you recall, I mentioned how I can sometimes have too many things on my to-do list. And then at the end of the day, I'm forced to shift certain tasks over to another day. And sometimes this pattern continues for another day and another day. Some people have a tendency of doing this towards the end of the week, leaving tasks dangling until the next work week. To avoid this, here's my third tip, is um, let's instead focus first on cutting down that list. Okay. That list needs to get cut down. A smaller list is more manageable and less intimidating. You can have your main list, right? Like that master list. And then you can break that down into smaller lists. Each day you're then taking three to four tasks off the main list to focus on. That way you're not overwhelmed with 30 to do's. Tip four. Um, something else is I, as I kind of, of, of teeth this up is that you can front load your day or your week or both. So you could put the more, more pressing Goliath size, heavier task at the beginning of the day or the week, um, and focus on those first. And once you come through there with your rocks and slingshot, boom, bam, payow, Goliath is knocked down and you can then focus on picking off the smaller task. Mm-hmm. You can also choose to analyze your list and delegate those smaller tasks to someone else. Here we go. Ding, ding, ding. Tip number five. And possibly collaborate on one or more of the Goliath size tasks. Folks, teamwork really does make the dream work. Look at your stuff and say, gosh, what could I be able to work on with someone else? Maybe someone else's brain I can then, you know, we can ping pong off of each other and, and really, you know, knock this out. So this leads me to um, when we're looking at our tasks, we can chunk similar ones together if possible, but we have to make sure we're avoiding the multitasking trap. Some people call themselves chunking and then all you're doing is multitasking. You're just doing it in a different way. 
Um, so what you're looking at is seeing where there's some tasks that are similar or they have this tie in to another task that you could possibly see a pattern to knock them out together versus flip flopping between an assorted list. All right. So you've got this long list and then all of a sudden, you know, 10 steps down, you know, 10 tasks down. Here's another task that complemented that would have coincided with one of your earlier tasks. So that is another way is being able to chunk those together so we can get them all done at one section. So for instance, if we're talking about we're going to knock um, just three to four in a day and we see that two of those tasks are similar, then those need to be on that, that list, right? Um, tip seven, it's recommended that you focus on those Goliath tasks when you are at your best, when your energy is the highest. So if you're one of those early rising, super excited morning people um, that, you know, they get it done in the morning and before lunch, if your energy spikes mid afternoon, then make sure that you're not scheduling your Goliath tasks for periods of the day when your energy dips. So early morning folks, focus on getting those tasks done in the early morning because you're not too, you're not too cool in the evening. If you're one of those mid-afternoon folks, focus on c trying to get those Goliath ones um, before that energy dips. A lot of folks have an energy crash after a big meal. Um, black folks like to call it itis. Um, <laughs> this is where, you know, we gorge out during our lunchtime period or whatever, whenever we designate as lunch. Um, and then we turn into zombies about 45 minutes to an hour after returning to work. When you're in that zone, don't focus on Goliath stuff. Focus on the little things that you can knock out with less energy, if that makes sense. You don't want to blunder the big stuff because then it's gonna, you're going to have to spend so much time and energy to fix what you messed up. If you focus on Goliath stuff when your energy is high, you're good. Now, I will say this. If you know you have a lot to do in a given day, waking up at 11 a.m. won't do the trick. If you're planning on sleeping before 2 a.m. the next day, at 11 a.m., start ain't going to work. So... For the time that's needed, wake up earlier. I'm naturally a night owl, but thanks to my world turning upside down this year, 2021, um, I've been waking up earlier and earlier to get more accomplished. I find myself up at 5.45 in the morning. I'm nestling into my prayer time. Yeah. When I normally wouldn't wake up until around 9 a.m., 9.30. Um, so <laughs> I suggest that you try it in small increments at first, like 15 minutes earlier. So if you normally get up at, at um, 8 a.m., you know, Get up 15 minutes earlier for the, you know, the first day, then 30 minutes earlier the next day and so on and so forth until you feel energized and accepting of the idea of waking up earlier than normal. If you're dragging it around groggy, you will get less accomplished than if you just woke up at your normal time. So it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense if you normally wake up at 11 and now here you're trying to wake up at seven and you're up here like dragging through the day until 1130. That didn't make sense. So you should have just kept getting up at 11. Make sure that you pursue this method with a blend of art and science until you find your sweet spot and make it work for you. Now, earlier I mentioned how I get distracted easily. And many of you, some of you probably already gotten distracted five times now um, in the last five minutes. But <laughs> many of you will probably admit that you struggle with the same issue. Oh, and so my ninth tip is one way to limit distractions is turn off notifications when you're focused on a task. Use apps on your phone and computer to limit screen time or limit which apps and sites you can visit during different times of the day. I absolutely love this. I have this set different times of the day for my laptop and my phone where it literally just blocks me from accessing things. I have to then intentionally override that, which means I am now making a choice to go up against that. Um, and that is not, a, that doesn't settle well with, with me uh, unless it's a highly pressing reason. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I have to wait until my period where I can actually access that. Some other things and um, tools that folks use are, you know, productivity trackers, um, you know, where they track their activities and how long they spent working on a task through completion. Some people, myself included, like to write out our to-do list using pen and paper. I prefer pencil and paper so I can erase when needed. Um, it just helps me visually look at and check off completed tasks. It also reduces my interaction with my devices. I am a techie, so I'm naturally drawn to these, these devices. Um, and then... I, I, something that I've been dabbling with and I want to see if any of you have or if any of you are really um, mastering this, but have you looked into automating your task? Look at the tasks that require repetition and you may be able to use an app or software like, um, you know, it's like Zapier where you can zap almost anything. As their site says, automate whatever slows you down with zaps. 
I mean, I don't know if that's how they would actually say it, but that's just what came to mind. <laughs> so, so search online and see what can work best for you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And if you love music like I do, um, consider playing music through your headphones if, you know, you're working around others. If not, you know, blast that mess um, and find something that um, puts you in the mood to get some work done. Don't, don't, don't play music that relaxes you into zombie mode. You don't want anything that's going to leave you drooling and snoring shortly after you press play. That's just counterproductive. Understand that narrative lyrics can be distracting if you're doing any type of cognitive work. Um, if you're doing a repetitive task, then look for music to have an upbeat tempo. You just don't want anything that's going to distract you. And trust me, <laughs> I've been on that party train more than once. I found myself busting out, dancing all over the place. Uh, one song after the other, like I was out at a nightclub. It took me a moment to remember that I was supposed to be working on something and that that something was not twerking or pop locking. Like get it together, Natasha. Focus, girl, focus. Um, <laughs> lastly, as I mentioned that goals are dreams with deadlines, you need to make sure that your tasks have start dates attached to them. If not, they'll just sit there until you quick, you're quickly approaching that due date or worse, hours before deadline. If you do the master list, like I've mentioned earlier, and then segment that list into smaller list, you can create the start date and due date, allowing yourself a preview period leading into the upcoming tasks. I have um, two quotes for you. One is from Brittany um, Bergener that says, it's surprising how much free time and productivity you can gain when you lose the busyness in your mind. Ooh, yeah. And here's one from Charles Richards. Don't be fooled by the calendar. There are only as many days in the year as you make use of. One man gets only a week's value out of a year, while another man gets a full year's value out of a week. Pup pow. He didn't say that, I did. With that, be sure to check us out on Facebook at Foreman and Associates and on Instagram and Twitter at Foreman LLC. Our podcast Twitter handle is It Ain't Small and our Instagram is Don't Call It Small. Be sure to also follow us and share us with your friends, colleagues, and family. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn at Natasha L. Foreman. Reach out to me, say hello, share your story. I look forward to meeting you. I want to make sure that I give proper credit for our show theme song. It's called Higher Up and it's by Shane Ivers. Thank you for tuning in to the Don't Call It Small Business Podcast, for sharing these episodes with others and for your continued support. And don't forget what I tell you on each and every episode. Don't call what you're planning, thinking, dreaming, or doing little or small. Go big, go bold, or go nowhere. I'll see you here next week. Make today a super awesome day. Take care.